Hey everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. It's the start of the week and we have a good bit to cover here. And some new stuff to cover here as well. We have severe weather risks to talk about, the threat of flooding exists, and even winter weather is coming into play. So buckle up because we're starting spring on a pretty active note from the looks of it here. So we're going to start actually by looking at the wind pattern here. And we're mainly going to be starting out with the Euro, of course, we're looking at the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. And right now, from what we're seeing here, it's not necessarily a stout severe weather setup by any means today, as we have a marginal risk already in effect. And I'll show you that real quick over here. This is the area we're talking about in two areas of interest, actually. And Euro's kind of reflecting these two points of interest. There's a weak little trough right here, and this is kind of leaning into just a little bit of a cold core setup. We have a chance of maybe a couple tornadoes popping up here, at least a tornado warning or two possible. There was a tornado warning earlier in Louisiana. Nothing has uh, come of that from what I know at this current time, but the threats still exist over towards that area this afternoon and into the evening. And the same can be said for this area over here towards the Midwest, over towards Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Missouri here. So that's going to be a point of interest for today. And then as we continue to go forward here, we'll see this come into play. This trough right here is going to be our next big player. And while on day two and three, we also have marginal risk, the this player is going to be for days four and five. This is day four where we have our slight risk for the uh, central area in Texas over here and towards northern Louisiana and then day five that threat shifts a little further to the south and also off to the east and it's all going to be from this player right here so if we continue to roll forward with this you'll see a little bit of a look right here that kind of gives me that thought of severe weather possible here but due to the forcing being so far back the tornado threat's going to be rather minimal on Wednesday, on a Thursday, excuse me, at the moment. It's mainly going to be due to these storms more than likely being a little bit more on the elevated side. If you want something more along the lines of tornadoes, you want something a little bit more surface based and you want the forcing to be a little bit stronger like it would be over here, for example. But you got to have the other parameters coming together there as well. It's all it's always a game of timing with severe weather and you don't really and we don't really have that good timing for this as far as Thursday evening is concerned. Friday is a little better in regards to a severe threat. Do we even see maybe some semblance of a short wave going here? But we'll have to see how this plays out. The warm sector is also going to be a, a key point of interest as well. If that moist sector and that warm sector push a little further to the north here, we could have a much more concrete severe weather set up here towards, let's say, southern Missouri, Mississippi, not Missouri. Southern Mississippi and Alabama, maybe even translating over towards Southern Georgia and South Carolina as far as Saturday is concerned. After that front gets out of here, we do have to watch towards the north, maybe for some wintry weather. And then after that, we'll go ahead and see this next storm system come in. And this is right at the end of the model run. So while well, I can't put a lot of merit into it, it is something that we will be keeping an extra close eye on to see if we do need to worry about this a little bit more. If we make that comparison to the GFS. We're going to look pretty congruent starting out, but it's really going to be towards the back end of this run, especially as we start to start towards the back end of this weekend. We see a little bit of a difference here. There's not as concrete of a signal for severe weather on Friday. Although it does seem like this trough also progresses a little bit further to the east and also evolves a little faster too. So there may be a little bit of a discrepancy here on time. Both of these models came out at lunchtime. So it's not so the time in which these were released, there's no discrepancy there. But the outcomes are a little bit different. And then of course we're also seeing this trough dig a little further to the south here. So depending on how this plays out could determine who gets snow, who does or doesn't get snow over here towards the northeast. Could be one of the last big snow, maybe even snow events in general. Can't say whether or not this one's going to be a big one just yet. 
but it's definitely something I'm going to be watching with uh, uh, with an increased interest. As we continue to go forward, we're seeing pretty much a similar deal with the Euro to the GFS starting out. But it's when we get past that 240 hour mark here. It's when we start to see a little bit of a key difference here. We saw a really stout storm system try to develop on the Euro here by that time frame. GFS just doesn't really have that going right now course we have to watch and see how this evolves but a big trough does end up developing towards the middle of the month here and with that could come a pretty big cool down as we head into the middle and maybe towards the back part of the month but what concerns me also is just as quick as that trough gets out of here see some pretty big ridging come into play and then two words that come to mind when i see this look right here and it's trough ejection trough ejection is usually a term that's best associated with extreme weather particularly severe weather during this time of year so if this scenario plays out and this is a big if because we're 300 hours out we're closing in on 14 to 16 days out really so can't put a lot of merit into that but if this does play out things could get pretty spicy especially towards maybe tornado alley and this will be a heck of a start to tornado season so keep an eye on this setup right now if you're watching as we're as we continue to go forward we're going to be uh up putting up an update every couple of days leading into this date if this trend continues we're looking for continuity at this point not just one run and then after that, it does look like we get into a little bit more of a fair weather pattern or slightly more fair weather pattern. We can still see plenty of rainfall, but the severe weather setup isn't looking as stout as we get towards the end of this 16 day run here. So like I said, a lot to keep track of here, especially towards the middle part of the month. But this is kind of what we were expecting. We talked about this a bit more on the outlook for the month and also the spring outlook so since we have a day four and day five severe weather outlook we're going to go ahead and actually take a look at our moisture returns here and we'll start out of course with the euro and the main thing we're looking for are these 60 degree plus dew points usually that's more than enough moisture pretty ample moisture that we would need for severe weather development here and you can already even see this for the uh, marginal risk days for uh today tomorrow and really even into wednesday you see those 60 degree dew points kind of hanging around a bit and they increase a bit more as we go into thursday a little bit of model discrepancy will be seen here between the gfs and the euro for thursday because here's what we're looking at when we get towards thursday afternoon much more stout on the uh, dew points there further off to the south here towards the north there's a little bit of an air of discretion here some of this doesn't quite make it as far back to the west here, but there's a little bit better look at the uh, moisture making contact, making a closer proximity towards that bound boundary here. So with that being said, GFS slightly shows a better look for severe weather right now for Thursday versus the Euro. But even then, even then that being said, 60 degree dew points are still more than sufficient enough 55 degree dew points is about the minimum so we still see that here it's just not quite as stout here if we go towards the following day if we go towards friday and we'll watch this move off to the east a bit here notice that the moisture is staying a little bit more uh, contained off to the west here and like i said this is a variable component here as to whether or not we may end up seeing all modes of severe weather maybe a linear mode towards the end of it as the system evolves or mainly seeing a marginal risk you're just kind of pushing it mainly to the uh, east late in the evening so the timing may be a key component once again with that there then eventually we may have to watch towards south alabama south georgia and then maybe in parts of south carolina as well in comparison with the GFS though, we have much richer moisture return then, and then this progresses a little bit faster. So if this occurs here, we may end up seeing a little something over towards South Georgia and more so South Carolina versus Alabama. 
so like I said there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, parameters here that are kind of variable at this point just based off looking at two of what's really many different models so like I said it's kind of a toss-up as to how things are going to play out with the severe setup here so best thing to do really is just stay tuned for further updates here as we go further along though as we get into the longer range here eventually we do start to see some more moisture returns and we're probably going to see an even greater reflection of that on the gfs based off of the look that we were getting with those troughs and ridges so we get towards the 240 range with that trough not really looking quite as impressive we don't really uh get that same kind of moisture return as we would get with that stronger system we were seeing with the euro but keep an eye on what happens after this point though clears out we get a more stable pattern in the short term and then eventually this storm system was around that 330 hour period does look like it starts to uh, pull in a little bit of moisture since we're further out at range it's not going to show up probably as clearly as it would as, it was, as if it was like 120 hours out per se but definitely seeing a couple more um, notable signals for maybe some more active weather as we get towards the middle to end of the month here just kind of further hammering the uh, hypothesis so to speak that I had so what we're gonna do now is actually take a look at what our temperature anomalies will be like and, and this is kind of a reflection of what we were seeing with that wind map with the ridges and the troughs here so as we continue to go forward we're in what's called a negative PNA pattern where it's cooler out to the west and warmer out to the east in this case it will be much warmer out towards the east mainly towards the north or east or more north and east i should say great lakes could be seeing 30 to potentially even 40 degrees above average throughout the week here so big time temperatures being shown there big time uh, above average temperatures eventually we do see a decrease in the cooler than average temperatures out west and also just the above and below average temperatures out east we start to get back towards slightly more reasonable numbers but still notably above average 15 degrees maybe even a couple spots may reach up to 20 degrees mainly towards the plains but watch what happens as time goes on especially as we get into those more um, active times here towards the middle of the month we see that cold air begin to shift a little bit and then we're kind of switching back and forth between that cold air being out to the east and then back out to the west so this is definitely showing indications of a more active uh, weather pattern as we continue to progress through the month here and the gfs is going to reflect that even more so than i would say the euro would especially as we get towards the back end of this run for the most part we're looking pretty congruent and then once we get towards the 10th and beyond look look how things start to change here we're starting to see those cooler than average temperatures kind of hang around the southeast a bit more warmer than average temperatures hanging around the central part of the country and then we start to see a lot of fluctuation begin once we get past 250 hours so like i said definitely seeing my fair share indicators of uh an active pattern here for sure so if we were to go and take a look at how those temperatures will reflect that story that was being uh, told to us through the models here we'll go ahead and start out with the euro just put this in a loop so to speak you can see that we got those 60s, those 70s, maybe even some 80s sneaking in. We do see some 80s towards the south. And eventually this even pushes further up towards the north here. There are even a few days where I can see those 60s even making it all the way up towards areas like Nebraska and Iowa here. So like I said, I do see some indicators of maybe a more active pattern or an unstable pattern. Eventually... I think there's going to be some more stout storm systems to come as we go later on into the month here for sure. The temperatures are just one indicator. Really looking at the uh, upper levels of the atmosphere, the jet stream, are going to be the other key component here. Look at the GFS. It's not like we're seeing too much in the way of discrepancy there. Obviously, slightly different scenarios. The temperature uh, fluctuation may, as far as like the numbers are concerned, of course, that goes from model to model. But as you can see here, the uh, general motion that you're seeing from the loop is pretty much the same. So got to keep an eye out for those warm sectors, those moist sectors. Uh, maybe a uh, 
mid to upper level cyclone as well you want details on that feel free to ask me questions in the comments so now that we've looked at all of that let's go ahead and take a look at what our radar could look like and then we'll get into the rainfall total potential rainfall totals maybe even some snowfall totals as well so here's our first storm system coming through and then here is our troublemaker that's likely to bring a little severe weather into play here towards the back side of this we do get a little bit of snow nothing major and then of course you have to watch for that system towards the end of that 10 day period based off of what the euro is showing us go to the gfs we're showing a slightly different picture there once we get past the uh eight to ten day period here so there's there's our first couple systems here severe weather setup wintry setup not looking quite as impressive may linger a little longer we go towards the middle of the month may see a couple of severe setups possible there do have a shot at maybe another wintry setup there and then after that we may have to watch for a storm system towards the back half of the month here to go along with it <clears throat> so the dates in particular of course we have thursday and friday and then after that point i would say right around the 15th all the way up until i would say the 20th we have to, have to we would want to be watching those dates in particular so last thing we'll go ahead and do is look at what our precip could look like and this is looking at both models here pretty good congruence for the most part maybe a little bit heavier rain further to the east here on the gfs than what the euro is showing us keep in mind this doesn't equate for precipitation type here so some of this could be seen as snow over here towards the northeast we will start out as rain though so there that is also another thing to keep in mind here i do think there's chances for lake effect snow here just how much is still questionable at the time this does better with uh measuring rainfall versus snowfall so we might switch over to a different um parameter here in a minute also have to watch towards the northeast where we could be seeing a mixture of rain and snow at times it's not uncommon to see that towards the northwest and then of course towards the gulf coast where we have the heaviest precip possible there so i guess now we'll go ahead and switch to winter precipitation here so here we are looking at our winter precip and for the most part like i said mainly going to be towards the northwest where we have the most action and towards the rockies especially the northern chair of the Rockies, where we could see feet of snow possibly. Maybe up to two feet in some areas could be greater totals towards the northern end of the uh, Sierra Nevadas. And then, of course, over towards northern Maine, just off the Great Lakes here, especially Lake Erie. We might see a little bit of increased activity in wintry precip over the course of the week. And then also towards northern New England, we may get into the action there as well. It's pretty much being reflected on both the models here. And really even a bunch of others at this point. So we could actually go ahead and compare the model loop here. And everything that's in range here is pretty much showing the same things. Again, this is the Euro. This is the Canadian model. Pretty much showing a lot of congruency. And then also a sneaky little area to watch over here is going to be over towards Nebraska where we could see some activity. I think that's going to be more so towards that 240 hour period. And GFS is kind of showing the same thing along with the icon as well. So last thing we'll go ahead and do is take a look at the blend of models and we'll go ahead and call this one a video here. And the interesting thing to make note of here is there's still a little bit of uncertainty in regards to said blend of models, at least in the short range for Nebraska. Everything else pretty much looks congruent with all the other models here. And just to let you know, the National Weather Service blend of models is usually a blend of all the models basically put, into get, put together into one and usually coming up with a mean average here. So I do find it interesting that we have enough discrepancy to a point here where we're getting trace amounts of snow and everything else is showing slightly more aggressive snowfall totals over here towards central Nebraska. So a little bit to keep it in mind there in regards to winter forecasting over there if you're interested in snow over towards central nebraska or if you're not interested in snow you just want to keep an eye on this nonetheless but that being said that's all i got for this video here hope you guys enjoyed it if you did you know what to do make sure you leave a like and a comment hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and stay tuned make sure you get that bell on as well 
but i'll see you guys in the next video you guys have a great rest of your monday till then take care have a good evening tired metalhead weatherman signing off have a good night